Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to Plymouth United Church of Christ this morning. We have just a few announcements. Um, today, this Transfiguration Sunday is the last Sunday of the season of Epiphany. And so Ash Wednesday is this coming Wednesday. It is here already. Um, we will be celebrating Ash Wednesday at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary, and we also will be live streaming and uh, recording it. So we invite you to come here for our Ash Wednesday celebration. Um, and then the next day I'm on vacation for a week as we go to state bowling. Um, so along with Lent being um, the six weeks of Lent, that means Easter is six weeks away. So watch for information about the uh, Easter flowers that will be coming forth. Uh, once again, the mission team is collecting gently used our new shoes, so you can start collecting those in the back for souls for souls. And they also have been very busy with the, emer the emergency buckets. Uh, they've done 25 emergency buckets at approximate cost of $75 each. And they're also doing um, hygiene kits and school kits. So if you'd like to be part of that, uh, donations can be made in the office for the mission team to help them with those expenses. And then um, there are a couple surveys on the back table in the parlor for the search committee. They're hoping to have those by next week at least. So if you didn't get one at home or you need an extra one because there's more than one person, you can pick that up. Good morning. I'm here on behalf of your search committee um, to find a minister who is called, he or she, to serve our church. Your search committee consists of Glenn Stoll, Gidget Brown, Jackie Naughton, myself, Ron Morsfelder, Joe Eislin, and Jill Arbreich. Um, we were all, somebody nominated each one of us. We were called by your operating council. And when I was called, why I said yes is because I love this church and I love you guys. And I got married in this church. Uh, my children were baptized in this building. They were confirmed in this building. and. I just have a history and it, it matters to me. So how do we meet to discern what our church needs in the future? Well, we need to ask everyone and we need everyone that's possible to return some kind of opinion to one of us or fill out a survey so we can put together an appropriate um, profile of what this church needs today and into the future. And as we wait for the surveys uh, to come back to the committee, committee we're putting together a profile and each one of us on the committee is taking a certain section and uh, addressing where we're at. So as a church as we do, to do this process we need to real, remember and realize that this is not a, sp uh, a sprint this is a marathon it's going to take time to do it correctly uh, we need to ask the right questions and and to do a lot of praying. So Ron and I and whoever else is present today will listen to all your questions and your concerns and we're actually meeting today at 11, so thank you. We gather here on this Transfiguration Sunday to hear the story of Jesus' Jesus's transformation and the disciples' response. Let's prepare our hearts our minds, and our souls for worship as we listen to, to the prelude. Join me um, 
in the call to worship. We come into this ordinary place expecting the extraordinary. Community in the hands and hearts of everyday people. Spirits lifted in the words and music of weekly worship. And nourishment in broken bread and shared cup. A way is made through the wilderness of our souls. Valleys lifted and mountains brought low for spirit to come alive within us again. A voice assures us, you are my beloved ones, and, and we, we are, are called, called to be Christ's, Christ's community, community, proclaiming that now is the time of God's favor. Let us worship in the glory of God. Please join me in the opening prayer. Through clouds of wonderment, of uncertainty, of anxiety, sometimes we hear your voice, O oh God, proclaiming the presence of spirit in the midst of our day-to-day -day living. We pause and become mindful. We pause and listen to the voice within and around. We pause and worship the astounding glory of your presence. Our gathering song is God is Here Today. It's uh, in the little tiny one, 2049, and we're going to do it two times because it's a quick one. <clears throat> Our scripture this morning is from Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one of any of the things they had seen. Would you please pray with me? 
Dear and holy God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations on our hearts, and the wanderings of our minds come together here in this place that in spite of all of our words, we might hear your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. When else have we heard that in the gospel messages? It's a real question you can answer. Thank you. At the baptism of Jesus, um, a dove came down, or a cloud like a dove came down and said, this is my son, my beloved, listen to him. How many times in the Gospels are we told to listen? I'm sure somebody somewhere has counted it up, but we're always being told repeatedly to listen. Because so often we're so busy with our lives using our words to get our point across, we forget to listen. And listening for the holy is hard work. I know I've said this before, but we don't listen, <laughs> so we say it again. Many, many years ago, I was talking to a young woman who had gone on a mission trip, and she was so disappointed because she had heard of all these stories of people going on mission trips and coming back having had this amazing experience of the presence of God, this big spiritual experience. And she came back and she said, I, nothing happened. I was looking for it and nothing happened. Her expectations were so high that maybe it happened and she missed it. Or maybe she was looking so hard in the wrong places and missed it. Because I too have been with especially, well, youth and adults on mission trips where they have talked about how they've had this amazing spiritual experience. And it sounds odd, but I think sometimes when we look too hard for it, we're looking in the wrong place. And sometimes when we just take in the experience and let the experience speak for itself, then we have these amazing revelations, epiphanies. Peter, James, and John went up to the mountain with Jesus. I don't know what they were looking for up there. I'm not sure why they went up there. They went up there to pray. And they had this incredible experience of Jesus. They all saw it, saw it. And it was so amazing, they wanted to stay there. Let's build some huts. And let's just stay here. Let's keep this moment. Well, in the lectionary, there's a, a portion of scripture that comes after this. I did not have it read today because I, I think sometimes less is more. But what happens when they come down the mountain... A man carrying his son comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, this is my only son. Save him. The child had a demon. I've, I've gone to your disciples. They couldn't save him. Can you save him? He's the only one I have. And Jesus healed the child. Mountaintop experiences are amazing. For those of us who have had those mountaintop top experiences, those aha moments, those amazing experiences of the holy in our lives, they are outstanding. But the work, the ministry that we are called to do happens not on the mountaintop, but when we go back down the mountain amongst the people. Raphael's picture of the transfiguration I was trying to figure out a way to use it, but that's technology, and I don't have that. Um, but it's, it's a, on the mountain, it's Jesus and Moses and Elijah, and down at the bottom of the mountain are a crowd of people and the man holding his baby out, his child out for Jesus. But it's, it's a mob down below. It's, it's chaotic. It's, it's crazy to take in everything that's going on down the mountain. But that's where we have to go if we're going to do the work of the Christ in our lives. We have to get in the midst of the people, in the midst of the chaos, and allow the people to come to us asking for healing and hope and ministry. <coughs> ministry didn't happen on the mountain. A miracle maybe, an experience, but the real ministry happened at the bottom of the mountain where the people were gathered looking for healing and hope in their lives.
We've just spent, what, two years isolating ourselves out of necessity. But the message of the Christ is <coughs> ministry doesn't happen in isolation. Isolation happens at the top of the mountain. Ministry happens in the midst of the crowd. In pandemic or no pandemic, there are still ways to put ourselves in the midst of a crowd figuratively so we can continue to do the ministry that we are called to do. And we have done that here. We didn't stop doing mission and ministry the last two years. We've been very active. But that's what we're called to be and that's what we're called to do in the name of the gospel. Go forth and listen for the cries of the people so that we know how to answer their cries. Church doesn't happen in here. We come here hoping to get a glimpse of the mountaintop so we can go out there and face the masses and answer their cries. That's what ministry and mission is. That's where ministry and mission is. This is the mountaintop, and now we need to go down the stairs to the people, down the mountain. Listen, this is my son. Listen to him. Where is Jesus? Wherever two or three are gathered, he's in the midst of them. And we're called to listen wherever two or three are gathered so that we can do the mission and the ministry of Jesus Christ. So nap time's over. We need to go down the mountain. Amen. <laughs> our minds and our souls together in prayer. God of grace and glory, we gather here on this day bringing to you 
the journey which we have been on this past week, months, even years. Hoping for a moment to lay at your feet our concerns, our hopes, our dreams. Hoping to be inspired by your word, by your spirit. We gather with ears and hearts and minds open that we can truly listen for your word, that we can truly hear your word, that we can truly embody your word. We come here a people of hope. We see numbers going down, guidelines being relaxed, and we are hopeful that there is a new day ahead, a new day of health and wholeness. We come here a people concerned as we watch the news and look at wars being waged, we pray. Especially on this day, we pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for a people who love their country just as much as we love our own. We pray for a people being invaded. We pray for a people who are living in fear. May all of our world leaders come together in this moment to prevent more atrocities, to celebrate life rather than bring death. Wars and invasions are such big things to pray for especially when it's your own land and your own home. But there are many smaller things we pray for as well. The many people whose lives have touched our lives, we pray for their healing, their hope, whatever their circumstance. They've received traumatic news of their health. Their families are going through a divorce. They're facing end of life issues. The loved ones have been hurt in accidents. Whatever it is, we pray for healing for these people, dear God, the healing that you know is best. We pray for Andy, Londa, Larry, Carol, Lucas, Rick, Gail, Brenna, Elaine, Doug, Lois, Bonnie, Kenzie, Marilyn, Carrie and her family, Donna, Mike, the Taylor families, Paul, Jill, Jim, Bill, Pat, Bailey, Al, Lynn, Joyce, and Jamie. Each of these are on a journey that they hope goes towards healing. Sometimes healing is being away from it altogether and having that new life in Christ. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, for the families of Jim, Amy, Dennis, Frank, for those still suffering from this disease, from those still mourning lives that have been lost. And dear God, we pray for our church as it goes through this journey of the search process. May we be patient with our search committee, the committee that we as a church chose. May we be supportive and understanding as they go through the process. And may we pray for the person who is thinking about a change in ministry or maybe a new start in ministry, that we might be matched up with them and start a new journey together. Remind us often, dear God, 
with the process of searching for a new pastor and the process of searching for a new church to serve is a listening process. And to remind us over and over again to listen. As we pause for a time of silent prayer, be with us, dear God. Hear everything that we have to empty from our hearts and then quiet us long enough that we might hear your word to fill our hearts back up. Be with us in prayer, dear God. Having heard our individual voices in the silence of our hearts, hear us now as we bring all of our voices together as one and pray the prayer which your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. give to the church? Why do we support the church? There are several levels of giving. Um, it's a, a pyramid, and at the top of the pyramid, people give out of obligation because they're a member, and they don't give much. Then there's because of duty, which is a little bit different than obligation, but at the bottom of the pyramid is gratitude, and the people who are the most generous with the church are generous because they're grateful. And so our job as Christians, not only is to listen for God's word, but to be grateful when we hear that word. And so let us continue to be, find ways to be grateful for who our church is, who we are as a church, and to support it accordingly. Let's pray together the prayer of gratitude. We have been awakened to the glory of God shining around us in gifts both great and small. Thankful for God's faithful presence, we give our offering, a symbol of our faithfulness in return. May it bring healing where there is brokenness, comfort where there is chaos, and justice wherever there is a need. Amen. Now, we didn't mean to compete with the choir this morning, but we're going to sing together number 282. <laughs>
gather in this space that we might hear God's word, but then we are called to go out of this space to listen further for, to, to God's people and to respond. May we go forth in the name of the God who has created us, the Christ who redeemed us, and the Spirit who always and forever sustains us. Amen.